Hello guys, Saprin from FUFOL and this is a new video for OpenFoam, a new tutorial and I uh, I really made it as interesting as I could and this time I'm going from Salome so I'll show you how to um, how to take a pipe like this and there is an obstacle inside it and I'll show you how to generate the fluid volume in Salome so uh, here it is, this is the fluid volume here uh, then I'll show you how you can mesh it so like this so this is the the mesh uh, I'm getting and how you can export it and prepare it for open foam uh, and I will apply an inlet of one meter per second on this side uh, I will do a simulation which is uh, incompressible transient and there will be turbulence uh, so I'll be using the piezo foam uh, s solver uh, and I really hope that you will learn a lot of things uh, from this video so let me show you quickly uh, what kind of result I'm going to show you at the end so this is the, the kind of result you'll get so I'll show you how to do the whole simulation from zero and how to get this uh, kind of model where you'll be able to, to get the, 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 the fluid velocity, the pressure, the, the streamlines uh, the contours um, and how to understand also how this works so if you like this kind of video please um, subscribe to my channel give the like to this video this really gives a boost to the channel and it helps me a lot to create more of, of, the, of those videos uh, because it really takes a lot of time to prepare all this content for you and uh, I'm happy a lot of people are telling me that this is useful so I'm continuing to make these videos uh, and I'm trying to put as much knowledge as I can into it to really share what I know with you um, so please uh, give a like and well let's start now okay so I'm starting with this inner flow pipes dot step and I'll show you in a second how it looks like uh, let's open Salome Mecha so I'm using the version 2019.0.3 universal and uh, I am on Ubuntu uh, 18.04 I'm not sure um, Salome works on uh, Ubuntu 20.04 so uh, you you should have like I think minimum 18.04 uh, uh, you can use the generic uh, Salome version as well because I will not be using a Codaster or any of uh, the simulation tool already in Salome here I will only use the Geom and uh, the SMesh module so let's start by um, open the geom module importing our CAD file so import step and then uh, it's on my desktop here it is uh, and be very careful about this warning because this is actually important so it asks you do you want to take in account the unit millimeter embedded into the file so if you take that into account, the model will be scaled accordingly to the real dimension of the model. If you click no, um, your model will be scaled um, and will be much too large for the actual dimension of the model. So I have to click on yes. Um, and then I still want to check that the dimensions are OK because this is a classic error. You do all the all the things you need to do. You simulate everything at the end. You realize that your model has been scaled up like a thousand times, and everything is wrong. So you don't want that to happen. So it's much better to check ahead of time uh, that your dimensions are correct. So go in the inspection dimension, and uh, you have a bounding box, for example, and this will tell you that your model here is um, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 so uh, it's fine that's uh, in meta unit this is the the dimension that i'm expecting out of that and now there's another thing i would like to change is that the orientation as you see here the small is uh, towards the z axis which means that i'll have to apply all my boundary condition in z axis and everything it's not very practical so i'd like to rotate this uh, geometry on the x-axis so let's go in operation transformation rotation select this geometry select the 
y-axis here in the menu and we'll do a rotation of 90 sorry 90 degree and uncheck create a copy so that it, it doesn't copy you just change that and let's have a look and there's another thing you see that this obstacle which is in the flow um, I want it to be along z-axis so I, I still have to rotate this so let's click in this object along the x-axis this time and rotate it off 90 degree as well okay very good now I think I'm in the right direction and now of course this is a structural model right and I will be doing a CFD analysis on that so I need to extract the volume which is uh, inside this so there are uh, several ways to do it um, you could like create a box around that, create some plane to cut and, and get the surface inside but I have an actual um, much better solution that I like to use is to extract uh, the inner surfaces of this so let's do that, let's go into um, new entity, explode and let's select this shape as the main object let explode that into faces and I want to select the exact faces that I want to extract from that so this is very useful feature so click on this uh, then keep the shift key on your keyboard pressed and I'm gonna select the other surfaces to extract so one two three and yeah this surface here as well now I'm gonna show the only the surface which are selected and that's fine that's what I want to extract so apply and close and now you see that I have my main volume and I have five faces below it so if I had the main volume this is the faces of the main volume that I've been able to extract and this is exactly what uh, I wanted to do now to create the volume I need to add two faces on those uh, those sides and the best way to do this is um, to use those features here you see you have build wire, build face, build a shell and build a solid so that's what I'm going to use so let's use build wire first to select the edges on, on this face apply and uh, on the other face here apply and close so I have two wires which uh, are represented both sides and now I'm just gonna build a face on top of those wires so here is the first face and second the second one is here apply and close okay so now I have I have something that looks like uh, the inner volume but it's not a volume yet it's not a solid it's just uh, seven faces basically so what I have to do is to build a shell first so let's select I'm going to use the tree and select those faces here so I'm sure this will not select all the kinds of objects apply and close so now I have a shell and uh, let's uh, build a solid out of this shell create single solid and uh, that's it now this is uh, this is my inner solid so I like to uh, this is just for fun right uh, I'll just to color that in blue and uh, make that transparent yeah because it uh, will be water and uh, right this is my pipe and this is the inner fluid right so so now um, I'm gonna work on this uh, inner part and I'm gonna uh, create the groups that I will need uh, and then I'm gonna mesh it so let's go into new entity groups create the groups and I need um, the inlet so create click on this plan here so I don't know why it shows the solid here actually uh, because the main shape selected is that so I need to um, yeah and you know what I do I will um, so I will not be bothered I will just export uh, yeah. select this solid export that in step file and this will be the inner 
flow dot step save um, let's just import it again just to be sure that I import I exported the right part because you never know and uh, yeah that's that's the right part so now I'll, I'll just uh, create a new document in Salome because I don't need all of this and um, in which I will import only the geometry of my inner flow that way it will be much more cleaner than uh, previously yeah okay it's uh, it's right here so it, it kind of lost the color but you know oh okay I'll put it I'll put it again even if it's uh, really not useful Okay, so now let's create the groups. New entity, group, create a group, select the surface. So this will be the inlet. So add that here, inlet. And the name you use here will be reused uh, in open form. So it's good to select the, the right names that you want to use afterwards. So apply. Let's uh, create the outlet. Apply. Now I need the, the walls, so basically I'll select everything here, add that, except, um, except this face here and uh, this face here. So I can show only selected, oh sorry, hide selected, no restriction. So yeah, because I already added those face here. Uh, never mind. So these, those are the walls. Okay, apply. And um, in order to do the meshing, I will need another group that will be used exclusively for um, getting uh, quality mesh. So this will be. Um, the obstacle mesh. So let's select one, two, and three faces. Again, I'm I'm pressing shift in order to select several faces at the same time. Show only selected, and this time you see that the only faces selected are uh, those three. Add that, and this will be obstacle. Obstacle. Okay, like that. Apply and close. Okay. So now I have my solid and I have I have the inlet, outlet, the walls and the obstacle. So I'm ready to uh, go for the meshing. So let's go to the S mesh module. Let's create a new mesh set. And um, for the algorithm I'll be using um, for the 3D, I will using NetGen 3D, and 2D, I will use NetGen 2D like that. Um, oh, sorry, NetGen 1D, 2D. So I will match the 1D, 2D at the same time, and then I will use a separate algorithm to measure 3D, and this will allow me to uh, to get a better mesh. So let me show you how. So first, um, hypothesis. So I'll have to set up some parameter and the dimension you see here will be only taken account for the 1D and 2D meshing. So uh, meshing of the edges and meshing of the surfaces. Um, so I need to define the men size and the max size. So the most important here is the max size. So the min size, um, let's just change it like this. The max size 0.08. Um, so I did some uh, trials first. I found out that this kind of mesh size is uh, good enough for the solution to converge. So I'll be using this. Um, in uh, reality, you want good results. You'll have to mesh smaller than this. Uh, but you, you'll 
uh, you'll see that a bit later. So for the moment, just choose this as the max size and the mid size. And um, and I want also to, to apply a local size on the obstacle. So that's why I created this mesh group. So click on this mesh group here and then click on this button on face. And you see that the obstacle here appears and this will allow you to control the value of the mesh on the obstacle. So I'm using 0.003 for uh, the value of the local size on this. So when you're done with that, click on OK and uh, set up the parameter for the 3D meshing. So we use Nogen 3D parameters and I will use the same kind of size 0.08 for the max and um, 0.012 let's say for the mean um, and that's all and I want also to add um, layers viscous layers around so I will use this option here to set um, so the total thickness of the viscous layers I'll be using is 0.007 again um, this is something you have to uh, do some tests and optimize um, and I will use three layers and now what you should be careful about is to remove the inlet and outlet from this so click on inlet here click on add click on outlet click on add and those faces added into here will be uh, removed from uh, the meshing. So when you click on OK, apply, you're ready to compute mesh. So right click on the mesh and click on compute. Now wait a bit that it generates um, mesh. And this gives us a mesh with 66,000 elements, uh, which is rather small. So that's why I'm saying if you want better quality of results, definitely will need more elements. But in order to keep the, the simulation fast in this case, and uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I will, I will keep it like this. Otherwise, the, the simulation will take too long. So this is what I get, and you see I, I'm getting three layers of mesh around this. I'm getting, um, and I guess it's difficult to see like this. There should be somewhere a clip option to in order to look at the mesh inside, but what you should know that yeah, there will be three layers of mesh all around uh, everything. Now the only thing we need to do here is to add some mesh groups, because right now we have only groups for the geometry. So let's go into Mesh and let's um, create groups from geometry and let's select Inlet, Outlet and the Walls and not the obstacle. I don't need this group here. Click and Apply and Close and you see that those mesh groups have been created. So you can check that those groups are OK. So this is the Inlet, this is the Outlet and this is the Wall. So uh, looks fine to me. So now the mesh is ready, so let's just export that. Um, so click on the mesh here, click on the mesh set, and uh, then export into UNV format file. So that's that's the format that uh, can be uh, easily changed into an open form type of mesh. So click on UNV, and uh, let's call that inner inner flow. Um, I don't know inner flow.unv save that and that's it for the meshing so in the next part we'll see how to uh, how to create the open phone case okay so for the next step I need to start from somewhere right so and generally uh, you start from one of the tutorials that are provided with open foam so here I'm on my computer and uh, let's open the OpenFoam dev where I have the tutorials provided. So I'm on the dev distribution, but if you are on OpenFoam 8, you should have exactly the same thing here. Um, 
And now there's so many things to, to look at. So how do I know which tutorial I should start from? Well, um, I'd like to start from the, the most basic thing are compressible, incompressible, uh, heat transfer. So what kind of simulation are you trying to do? So in this case, it's simple flow inside a pipe um, and the fluid will be something a bit like water. I will suppose this is an incompressible type of uh, uh, simulation. It's, it's only compressible when uh, you know you have very 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 high uh, velocity and uh, you want to analyze shock waves and stuff like this. So it's it's not the case here. We, we are just in, uh, in normal incompressible type. So I double click on this one. Uh, and now there's again a choice of uh, different type of stuff and you see you have symbol foam, you have piezo foam, you have ico foam and pimple foam so those are the name of different solvers that open foam have and you have to choose basically the right one so for my simulation I want to do a transient uh, type of simulation so I need to choose the right solver so how, how do I know what this symbol foam of piece of foam uh, is actually doing so um, well you could look at the documentation online and what I like to do is simply to open a terminal and because I have uh, open foam into my bash rc file already installed uh, so if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, you can open your bash rc um, like that and at the bottom I have this line which basically sources the open foam uh, bash rc so which means that when I open my terminal I already have all those function uh, in it so if I tip simple simple f for example and I double click on tab you see that it auto completes as simple foam so it means that you know I can call this simple foam uh, in my terminal now if I do simple foam dash help I see that I have a list of options I can uh, I can actually uh, give it to this uh, simple form solver. So there are options to actually run the solver, but you have also the documentation. So you can just do like that simple form doc, and this will open in a browser uh, a guide that basically tell you that simple form is a steady state solver for incompressible turbulent flow. So. Um, so this is steady state, so that's not the one I want. So let's go back and let's try piezo foam. Piezo foam dot doc. And this one is a transient solver for incompressible turbulent flow. So uh, that's good. I want to simulate transient incompressible turbulent flow. So that, that's what I need, piezo foam. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's open this piece of foam folder. And again, I have the choice between laminar, LES, and RAS. So what is that? Uh, basically, this is the... If your model is turbulent or is, is laminar, you'll have to choose uh, between these uh, three types of model. So um, for that, let's have a quick look at this illustration I found on the internet. Um, basically you have to calculate the Reynolds number and if your Reynolds number is between 0 and 2300 let's say um, you are you can say you are in laminar flow if you are between uh, 2300 and 4000 you have a transient region and if you are up you know higher than that then you are in a turbulent flow so turbulent flow means that you have some uh, vortices uh, and very small eddies appearing into your flow so you need to to do the calculation using a turbulence model um, so i will not use laminar so now you have the choice between RAS and LES so RAS means Reynolds averaged uh, models so that's let's say the most classic type of turbulence models uh, so that's what i'll be using and LES is a large eddy um, uh, simulation, so it's uh, basically what the RAS does is that it's uh, it takes your um, Navier-Stokes equations and uh, it basically averages them. So uh, 
so the results that you get is the the composition of an average uh, average flow plus a turbulent kind of flow and the turbulent part is modeled by a turbulent model um, that we'll, we'll talk about. So I'll use K epsilon model for that. Um, the LES is a bit different. The LES is basically looking at the, the vortices generated by the turbulence and it basically say, okay, if the vortices are small, uh, I will ignore them and I will actually simulate the large eddy, uh, large eddies. So, uh, now the problem with LES is that it requires a mesh which is very, very, very small. So generally, you know, if you don't have a workstation which is, uh, or, uh, you know, a small cluster or something like that, it's very difficult to do LES simulation. So basically, um, RAS is the way to go. And we see that we have two cases, cavity and cavity coupled. So I'll be basically using the, the cavity type of... Uh, of case and uh, cavity copal, yeah, that's uh, probably another type. So I'll start from this one and then I'll modify it in order to, to suit uh, the model. Uh, oh yeah, and by the way, how do I know that my flow is turbulent? That's, uh, yeah, that's a good question. I wanted to talk about that, but I forgot. So um, go back to the definition of um, the Reynolds number. So I told you, you need to calculate this Reynolds number and in the open foam, so you have basically this formulation. You have a D, which is a characteristic length in your model. You have the U, which is the velocity, uh, you know, so you can take the inlet velocity and you have the kinematic viscosity here. So in my case, I will be using um, 10 power minus five for the dynamic viscosity. Um, the velocity at the net will be one meter per second. And for the D, um, let's have a look what it is. So the D is basically the diameter of the section. So I can uh, measure that, measure with a bounded box, compute. So if I look at, uh, let's say Y, so this will be 0 0.12. So if I go into an Excel file and I calculate basically the Reynolds number that I will be using, uh, it gives me 12,000. So this is definitely turbulent. Okay, so now let's um, let's copy this um, case, this cavity case, and then uh, let's uh, assign the right, um, the right stuff into this model. So let's open Again, this terminal window that I open, let's cd into uh, my foam run folder, right? Um, what do I have into this? Okay, I already have a bunch of uh, old studies. Now let's copy CPR to copy all the files of my tutorial. So my tutorial should be at... Um, I will copy that into um, the current folder. So now I have this cavity and I'll, I'll change the name of my um, cavity. So MV cavity into um, inner flow, inner flow three, as you see, I already have uh, done that two times. So this, I will call that inner flow three. Okay. And now I have my uh, case, so I can uh, open that here, run in you know, 3. And now I have basically to, to modify all that in order to, um, uh, in order to, to assign the right uh, boundary condition, the right, uh, everything that is required. So the first thing is, uh, you know, how do I take the mesh I, I generated with Salome and uh, convert that into a uh, mesh for open foam, right? So let's open the system and uh, in this test case I already have a block mesh dict that I won't be using so I'll just delete this one and um, let's take my um, UNV file that I generated so that I exported from Salme. Let's uh, cd into my inner flow 3 
folder. Let's clear a bit the terminal so it will be uh, nicer. Um, okay, and now there is a I need to use an open foam function called uh, ideas, ideas UNV to foam. So generally, if you type ideas U and you click on tab, it should autocomplete. Um, and this function, ideas UNV to foam, is the function you use to convert uh, the mesh. So you can have a look at help what it does. Um, and basically, you have you have also the doc if you want. Have a look. So, IDS UNV format mesh conversion. So, that's basically what it does. So, not much description here, but you'll see it's very easy to use. So, I just have to use this function and provide this inner flow, inner flow .unv that I generated. Click on enter and um, you have a bunch of uh, text that will be outputted and it should tell you that basically your uh, mesh has been generated so it, it started reading um, my it generated 66,000 cells and 7,600 boundary faces and you see it, it also found out my three uh, groups um, that I generated into Salome so everything is uh, fine so if I go into constant, you see that I have this folder polymesh that appeared and this folder is what contains the OpenFoam mesh right now. So um, OpenFoam doesn't read the UNV directly, it reads the mesh that has been generated after you enter this um, function. And um, there is something to change here. You have to open the boundary file and uh, so you have the three, um, the three faces the three groups, mesh groups basically, that are, are here. But because this is a wall, the type of uh, the type should be changed from patch to wall here. So just enter wall, click on the save, and uh, now we have um, now we have successfully converted our mesh into uh, open form. So we can check. We can actually check the mesh to make sure that this mesh is okay or not. Um, and this is important actually to check the mesh. So here um, there are a few things that you should be aware. If this is um, trian this is tetra mesh, the mesh non orthogonality is actually very important. And here it's very high. It's uh, 85 is like huge. Um, generally, it should be between 50 and 60. So the 85 is uh, really not that great. So I did some tests and it still converged. So, but you know the like I told you at the beginning, I would uh, if I want to be serious about the results I, I want to obtain from the simulation, I would refine the mesh much more and uh, make sure that the quality of this mesh is uh, really, really much better than what I have here. So later on, I'll show you that because of this, I'll, I'll modify the FV volume file to add some uh, correction for this um, in order to be sure that the solution converged. Uh, now, make sure that um, it doesn't give you any errors because sometimes you have an error that you know your your elements you know has a face which is not oriented correctly or something like that and if you have an error you know, of course your simulation will not work at all so you know make sure at least you have this and if your simulation doesn't converge whatever you do there is a big chance that this is because your, your mesh is not good enough so uh, you know come back to your Salome and try to mesh smaller, smaller and uh, have better mesh. So, okay, so now that uh, this is said, I can start to set up my, uh, my uh, boundary conditions. So let's start by checking the constant. So the first is the momentum transport dictionary in, will, uh, in which you will find the turbulence model use. So I'll use K epsilon model uh, so you need to have k epsilon here and uh, the 
turbulence model should be activated on. So why do you use uh, K epsilon? Well, because this is a, let's say, a classic turbulence model. So it's uh, it gives the best result far from the wall. So it means that it'll be more accurate uh, at the middle of the pipe and not so much uh, at the wall. Uh, so that's why we also we use um, y plus wall function to go uh, to with uh, this model. Uh, if you want a model that works better at the wall, the k omega is uh, better. And also you have a mix of both, like a k omega SST, for example, but I won't talk about that here. So uh, we'll use k epsilon. Now let's look at the definition of the material. So uh, material used uh, is defined here. So the only thing you need is the the kinematic viscosity nu, and the value of this kinematic viscosity is uh, one at the power minus uh, five. So as soon as you talk about turbulence and k epsilon model, uh, you will need to calculate the initial values of uh, two uh, parameters that will be used for uh, the turbulence, the which are called the kinetic energy and the uh, eddy length scale. So you can go on Wikipedia and read this uh, article about turbulent kinetic energy. Um, and basically what I'll be using is uh, the, val the, the formulas here written uh, initial conditions. So, um, and this is given for a duct. So this is exactly what we need. Um, so the, the k, the initial k value will be three thirds of u, which is the velocity of the inlet, multiplied by i, which is um, the turbulence intensity. And this turbulence intensity is calculated here as 0 0.5 uh, Reynolds number power minus uh, 1 divided by 8. Um, so you just have to calculate this. And the, the turbulence length scale can be estimated. So uh, estimate is important here because it's not always equal to uh, this value. So this is true for inside a pipe or a duct. And so that that's that works well for us here. Uh, now, if, it, if you're not in a pipe, the coefficient here, 0 0.07, might be uh, slightly different. So you, you need to have a look at uh, how to calculate that. So let's have a look at my Excel file. So I just use this formula, so I calculate the initial turbulence intensity first, which gives me uh, 0 0.05 almost, and then the pipe turbulent length scale here uh, from this formula here gives me 0 0.0084, and the eddy kinetic energy 0 0.036. So those are initial values only, right? So uh, this will be true at the inlet, and, and then this will be calculated, of course, uh, by the solver. Now let's look at uh, the initial uh, boundary condition for my model. So we see that we have a lot of different files here. So I will not use omega and new tilde. So I'll just uh, delete those two. Uh, so I need to define the velocity, the pressure, um, the kinematic viscosity, and then k and epsilon. Let's start with the velocity. So uh, at the inlet, uh, so I need to change those names. So my name inlet, I will have a velocity of fixed value um, and one zero zero. So this is uh, this is what I want. Um, at the outlet, so this is will be okay. Outlet, um, I will have a zero gradient velocity and the last one are at the walls I will have a no slip condition okay that's my velocity and basically the pressure will be the inverse it will have a fixed value at the outlet uh, of zero and zero gradient at the inlet uh, and then a zero gradient on the walls so let's uh, define the pressure so again inlet will be a zero gradient, so that's fine. The outlet will be, um, so fixed value, and uh, uniform zero. Yeah, 
yeah, value. Sorry. Yeah, value unit from zero, and uh, the worlds will be zero gradient. Okay. And uh, the this kinematic viscosity. So for the kinematic viscosity, um, the inlet will be calculated zero. So this means this will automatically be calculated. Uh, the outlet will be also the same, calculated zero. Um, and the walls here will be actually equal to that. So instead of writing this, I'll just copy that first. So this will be walls. This will be calculated like this. So the way to understand the, the wall function is that if you look at this, I will be a fixed velocity of one meter per second on, on all the inlet, right? Uh, but on the wall, I have uh, no slip condition, so the velocity is zero at the wall. So you have a huge uh, gradient in between the, the one meter per second velocity and the zero velocity at the wall. And uh, because the in, in the, the finite volume method used to, to solve this, uh, the, the change in velocity between each cell is linear, right? So it's very difficult to capture the the huge gradients of velocity and between the, the center and the wall. Um, and in, in practice, you should have uh, very, very, very small um, cells very close to the wall and gradiently, you know, increase the size of those cells. Uh, a bit like we did, but m in much, much more, um, you know, uh, increased number. So, and because th this would take uh, too much in terms of calculation, um, instead of doing that, instead of increasing uh, the number of cells, well, uh, some, some very uh, clever people have found that you can use a function uh, that will basically uh, do this kind of job instead of the cell. So the function from the wall to the middle will help you to reach this uh, gradient of velocity without having to uh, really, really make those physical cells. That's what this uh, function here on the burning connection is, is doing. It is very useful. So let's now have a look at the K and Epsilon. Uh, and how I have to set that up. So if you look at the K definition, so uh, 0 0.035, so the default value, well, it's already almost what uh, I, I have here. So I think I could even use that um, instead of this because it's anyway, it's an approximation um, of the initial condition, but you know, because I already calculated, so Let's let's choose six six instead, but you know it it won't change much. So, uh, but let's let's set up those boundary here. So I need the inlet. I need um, so I need the inlet. I need the, the outlet, and I need the walls. So the condition at the inlet should be actually fixed value. Um, and this is, yeah, this is the value it's, it's fixed. The condition at the wall should be this. This is the wall condition. And the condition at the outlet should be zero gradient. So I'll just remove that and put a zero gradient. Okay, now let's have a look at the epsilon condition. And so I'll change the name first inlet, outlet, walls. Okay, so this will be the condition at the wall. No, oh, sorry. That. Um, again, the inlet will be fixed value. Um, the outlet will be zero gradient. Uh, 
and the value here that calculated was 0 0.0084 actually so I'll just change that into 84 and something important that um, if you're not so familiar with turbulence is that you may think, yeah, well, those coefficients, I can just leave a default and it should work. Um, well, in this case, what I calculate is actually pretty close to, to the default, uh, but in general, this is not true. You should uh, calculate those parameters and uh, make sure that what you calculate is close to that. So uh, otherwise you will get weird results. So, you know, make sure you calculate the K and Epsilon uh, initial conditions. This is uh, actually important. Okay, so we have that, we have the constants. Now we remain um, to set up those three, the control deck, the FV schemes and the FV solution. So let's start by setting the control deck. Uh, let's check that the solver is, is the correct one. So it's piece of foam, yes. So start time at zero, end time. Um, so end time for my simulation is 0.02 second. Uh, the delta t is uh, uh, so this is too large. 1 e minus 5. So um, for a steady state simulation, the delta t is not real time. So um, you can be a bit more flexible with the definition of that. But for transient simulation, this is a critical um, parameter. So in case your simulation doesn't converge, try to decrease the delta t. That's the first thing to do. Um, and OK, so the time step, the right interval. So we'll see that from, um, so if you calculate the number of, um, so you can kind of number total total number of steps of this simulation will take by taking the end time and dividing by the delta t. So in this case it will be I think ten thousand. So I don't want to output ten thousand results because it will be too huge on my uh, hard drive. So I will just keep this value right interval. So every hundred time steps, you know, I will have a file exported with uh, details of my simulation. And for the moment, I will leave it like this um, and I'll come back a bit later to show you how to set up uh, residuals. Um, now let's have a look at uh, another dictionary, the FV uh, schemes. So the FV schemes file is actually pretty important here and for one reason is that my mesh non-orthogonality maximum is pretty high. It's uh, 85 which is actually very very high um, so I need to compensate uh, by changing the default uh, grad schemes and uh, the default div schemes. So I found those on um, in recommendation on the uh, internet uh, in some forums. So I'm using cell limited ghost linear one here. Uh, and here for the div divergence fee, I'm using go ghost linear upwind and also cell limited ghost linear one and I'm using ghost min mode for the diff uh, k. That's what I'm using for um, the, the FV scheme. So in, in this file, what is uh, written is basically the tolerance for the convergence of uh, the terms like pressure, for example, um, and also for the other terms. So this is the velocity k epsilon so I don't need omega r and u tilde, so I can remove that. But I think even if you leave it, it's not a big problem. Um, yeah, and uh, the important thing also is here, the piezo. So you have some uh, correctors, so which means that if you increase the number of, of iteration here, calculation will take a bit more longer, but you will, get, you will have um, better, um, let's say, better results. So I'll increase this one a bit to 3 uh, and also I'll increase the non-orthogonal correctors to 2 because uh, of because my mesh is not great basically. Uh, when I did the check mesh I showed you that 
here I have 85 in the non-orthogonality max, so which is very bad. Um, and because of this, this might cause some problems, so you, you need to use this non-orthogonal correctors here and define a value here. So um, yeah, that's it. So I think now, now um, last thing, when uh, you calculate, it's great to be able to see the convergence. So uh, you have to set some residuals also. So which means that you will be able to see as a graph how the velocity and the pressure actually converged. So the way to set up the residual is written on this uh, user guide page, a very useful page about graphs and monitoring. So um, if you go down and uh, you go to a section called um, live monitoring of data, it just tells you that you can set up a function called uh, function residuals. So we'll in the control deck. So I'll just uh, copy that and um, I basically put that at the end of the control date. I'll just delete this like this. So you can it doesn't really matter, but I can make it like that. Okay. And when you have this, um, you you will by default have the residuals of the pressure and the velocity uh, that will be exported. Now, if you want to um, also get the residuals of other quantities uh, like k, epsilon, and all this, you can follow the instruction here and do a foam get residuals. Um, and this will allow you to, to get the file with, uh, with the other residuals. So, for the, for in my case, I, I just want to monitor the pressure and uh, the velocity, so I'll just use. The, the basic function. Uh, I don't need to customize. And after you do the calculation, the you will see that you'll have a post-processing uh, folder that will be generated. And uh, you can use this common form monitor um, post-processing residual to plot this graph. So we'll see how to do this. Uh, very useful stuff. Okay, and uh, now we're ready to run this case. Okay, now everything is set up, so it's time to run uh, the simulation. So, piece of foam, and let's just hope that it works. Cool, so the solver is launched. So, now we basically have to wait, and um, this might take some time. So every, I think every hundred iteration, I'll see a file here appearing. Um, I have the post-processing file, which already appeared here, which contained the residual, and that will help me to plot the, the convergence curves at the end. So let's just wait for uh, this to end and, uh, and we'll see uh, what we get. Okay, so unfortunately, this um, simulation just stopped. So, and this is probably because the mesh is not good enough. So, we'll have to refine a bit smaller. So, go back to uh, Salome. Let's open again the mesh. Okay, and let's just uh, remesh that. So I'll do a right click, clear the mesh data, and I will um, edit the mesh. And I have to click on the edit button here to edit the parameters of the mesh. So let's use instead of eight, let's use six here. Local size, let's decrease that to two, for example. Um, and uh, let's do the same here for 6. 
Okay. Let's remove that. Okay. Yeah, seems to be fine. I think I got some kind of error message that I closed. I don't know what what it was. Let, let me just compute again just to see this. Warning: the thing test zero viscous lace not reached. Average is zero point zero four. Okay, so I think well, it's just a warning, so it should be working. But let's just. Um, Let's change the thickness of the viscous layer to 4. And uh, let's compute again. Okay, so now I have no warning. I have 100,000 elements, which is much more than uh, last time. I hope this time it will work. So let's. Uh, the mesh groups are already created. They are here. Let's export that UNV file. Um, let's call that inner flow 2. Save this. So you see I have the mesh here, so the only thing I have to do is IDS, IDS UNV to foam inner flow 2 this time. Okay, and don't forget to go in the constant poly mesh and to change again this patch to wall. Now let's check the mesh again to see if I'm getting something better. Um, okay, so the mesh norm or orthogonality decreased, and so I should have uh, something much better right now. I think I had s around 300 faces that were severally non-orthogonal. Now this decreased to 50. So let's try again to solve that, hoping that this time this will work. Okay, so let's wait. Okay, so now the simulation is over. So it took exactly 1,105 uh, 1, seconds, so around 18 minutes. Now, if you have MPI installed, don't forget that you can also run uh, this OpenFoam solver using MPI run and using the, the cores of your computer. So. I'm curious to know how long it will take if I do that, so let's try. MPI run piece of foam. And now let's wait again and uh, see how long it will take. Okay, so now the run with MPI is completed. And yeah, it's, it's actually very interesting because I'm getting a uh, calculation time which is almost two times what I, I got without MPI. So I'm either running that in the wrong way or maybe my model is too small to regain really any advantage from running the MPI. So, well, if you have an answer to that, um, please enlighten me. Uh, write in your comment what why I'm getting two times uh, using MPI because this doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I'm always thinking that this would be faster, but um, well, it doesn't seem to be. So uh, if you have an idea what is happening here, let me know. So after the calculation is finished, you can also check the residuals to see how the solution converged. And for that, you have to use foam monitor and then call this file here um, residual.dat. So let's have a quick look at the options you have on the phone monitor by using the help option. 
uh, and you see you have the option L which actually tells log scale. So this is very important to to draw the curves that you get into a log scale. And you get the example of what you should uh, actually put here. So I'll, I'll, I will just copy that, paste it here and show you what I get. And that's the kind of uh, data I'm interested to see. So that shows you the convergence of the pressure and the velocity in the three directions. So we can see here that um, yeah, the, the convergence is uh, is okay. It doesn't oscillate too much and uh, it's uh, it's converging. So that's great. Okay, so now it's time to review the results with uh, Parafoam. So let's, let's launch Parafoam in the background. Choose the open form reader. Apply. And so in order to be able to see anything, I have to clip that. So can use the filters here or control space, clip, filter. So let's use clip filter like this. Okay. Um, so this is the result of the pressure at the first increment. So if I look at the last increment like this, this is going like that. I can, um, let's rescale to the data range. So the, I'm still looking at the pressure. Let's look at the velocity now. So this is the maximum velocity. And let's change a bit the, the preset. So let's open the color map editor. So if you don't have it here, go in the view and uh, you should be able to um, activate here, color map editor. So just check this option, this will appear. Uh, and let's choose the jet color scheme, which is much better for CFD. And I like also to decrease the number of colors to, uh, let's say, 12, for example. It's a bit better looking. Um, so my inlet is actually on the right, so maybe it's better to have a look at um, on the other direction. So let's uh, quickly switch that like this. So my inlet is on the left, my outlet on the right. And um, now you see the result of the velocity. So the velocity is basically, let's put a probe just to see what is the value here. Um, interactive select point. We can put a point here and use a selection display inspector to have the value of the velocity displayed here. So we have the velocity as a vector here. So, so basically you see the component um, u, y and uz are almost zero or very close to zero. So the most biggest component is ux of course. Uh, so here it's uh, in this color range, it's almost one. Uh, when I get close to this obstacle, it goes, the velocity decreases, goes to 0 0.8 and then 0 0.4. And of course, um, you know, it, it starts to go on the side. So if you, you see at, at this side, the velocity here is pretty high, it's 1 1.5, 1 1.6. Um, and then it, it decreases on the other side and uh, it comes back to one. So, and that's be that's because the flow is basically going um, outside of the obstacle, of course. So let's draw the streamline to, to visualize that a bit better. So to do the streamline, let's apply another filter, stream tracer. And uh, let's apply, let's use a point source around that area. 
here. Apply that. So I don't want to hide this. So I'll just make the clip transparent by decreasing the opacity here. It's a better looking. Uh, I like to give some uh, some thickness to my lines. So I'll go in my stream tracer and add another tube filter and um, decrease a bit of diameter. Yeah, and now I'm getting something like that. Decrease a bit more diameter. Yeah, okay. So now we have a visualization of you know what is the velocity doing around this obstacle. So of course here it goes in straight lines and um, when the particles of flow you know fall on this obstacle here of course they are deviated and they go around this obstacle so the that's why the the velocity here increases in the fluid of course um, okay so if you don't know how to use Paraview very well I have a full course also on YouTube uh, about Paraview so I strongly advise you to have a look at uh, this course because it will uh, basically tell you everything that I'm showing you right now but in much more details so how to create animation how to do all the stuffs um, now you know I got my simulation I got my results so yeah, I think this video is almost uh, finished. Um, let me know. Let me know if there is something special you want to see um, in in the next videos uh, about open foam or about any other topic. Uh, I I read all the comments I get, and I'm always happy to get some feedback about this content because it it takes really a lot of time to create. And um, um, you know, if you like the video, please um, put a like subscribe to my channel and this really this is a big help and uh, it really motivates me to make more videos uh, in in uh, in the next weeks and, and months so thank you again thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next uh, videos